This week is International Supercomputing, the second biggest supercomputing conference of the year. Now, as you'd expect, all the big players have announcements. Intel's one this time around is a bit of a doozy. What's your minimum specification? Linode makes managing cloud infrastructure easy with sane pricing, a full-featured API, and 100% human support. Whether it's a personal VPN, game server, website, or a big-ass GPU solution, new users can try Linode today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techtechpotato. So with any server processor, the thing you're fighting against is feeding the cores with data. Server processors have gotten bigger with more and more and more cores. And in order to keep those cores at peak activity, you need to do what's called feed the beast. That means you have to have large enough caches to fit the data. You also need a high-speed interconnect in order to move the data around. Beyond that, you need enough memory channels and memory bandwidth in order to feed the caches. Now, historically, this has been done by just adding more memory channels. So DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, we're coming to. And, you know, we've gone from two channel to three channel to four channel to six channel to eight channel. With the peak uh, processes in the market now being eight channel, doing about 204 gigabytes per second. Now, this pales into comparison to GPUs that use onboard GDDR memory or HBM because they can design those chips uh, on the board themselves, so there's much tighter control. Main board memory for the CPU is designed to be modular so you can choose which capacity you want, so there are uh, le there's less room to optimize for performance. The end result of this is that we have server CPUs that have eight channel memory, support two DIMMs per channel, and you have two sockets in a system. So that's 32 DIMM slots for DDR4 3200. Two sockets, about 400 gigabytes a second if you total it up. Still pales in comparison to the terabyte per second, two terabytes per second, you can get with a GPU with HPM or an accelerator with HPM. So the smart thing to do, add a HPM to your processor. And this is what Intel has kind of announced what they're going to do today. Intel's next generation Xeon platform is called Sapphire Rapids. We've just had the launch of Ice Lake Xeon, and now Sapphire Rapids is coming along with their 10 nanometer enhanced super thin process. Intel hasn't gone into too many details about what this processor has. We know it has DDR5, we know it has PCIe 5.0, and it will support CXL 1.1. However, the announcement today is that not only will you have versions that support DDR5, you will also have versions that have onboard HBM. Not only that, with the HBM, you can also have HBM plus DDR5. So you end up with a multi-tiered caching strategy. Not only do you have L1, L2, L3, now you have this onboard HBM, then out to DDR5. Benefit is you don't even need to have DDR5. You can just have it with HBM. That means you don't have to have any DIMM slots at all. That makes your uh, implementation really, really dense, which is what a lot of compute customers of Intel really, really want. Great news for Sapphire Rapids with HBM. There's going to be you know versions with HBM and versions without. But the versions with HBM, something like this sounds esoteric. Sounds like a you know a really addition cost adder sort of thing for specific customers. Intel has stated they're going to make it generally available for everyone. The first customer for this Sapphire Rapids with HBM technology is going to be the Aurora Supercomputer at Argon National Labs. Uh, Intel is still committed to delivering part of that system uh, by the end of the year. Intel has said that Sapphire Rapids with HBM for general availability will come a little bit after the general Sapphire Rapids launch. Now we're expecting Sapphire Rapids launch uh, in the early part of 2022. So kind of end of 2022 is perhaps where we're going to see this HBM version come to the mass market. Exactly how much HBM Intel is putting on these processors, they haven't really told us. Though we can make some you know, educated guesses, probably one to four stacks of HBM 2E uh, running you know, up to eight high stacks. These individually, when you run them at their peak speed, do about 400 gigabytes per second bandwidth. So with four stacks, 16 gigabytes a stack, 64 gigabytes total, running at over one and a half terabytes per second, that's a ton of memory bandwidth. Now, if you're only getting 64 gigabytes, that's not really enough for enterprise workloads. Maybe it's enough for, you know, for the really compute dense stuff, which don't need a lot of memory. 
it's 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 one of these trade-offs that you get with these caching tiers. You have L1 cache, super, super fast, but really, really tiny. L2 cache, still quite fast, a little bit bigger. L3 cache, a little bit slower, but lots and lots bigger. Then normally we have main memory, DDR4, DDR5. You know, really, really big. We're talking terabytes, but comparatively, it's slow compared to the caches. Now we're putting in that sort of HBM layer. And if you really, really want, Sapphire Rapids will support next generation Optane as well. So you have core registers, L1, L2, L3, HBM, DRAM, Optane, NVMe, SSD, hard disk drive, tape. It's that 11 layers of memory. It's going to be fun. One thing that's going to be interesting to find out with these HBM processors is its effect on performance. Now, more cache, more performance in uh, workloads that can use that cache, yes, but also HBM costs power. Now, it can be anything up to, say, 10 or 20 watts per stack of HBM. So four stacks, let's just say it's 80 watts. That's 80 watts that the processor cores don't have. So you're going to have to end up reducing the frequency in order to reach your overall package power. So say we were running a 280 watt processor, we've got to use 80 watts for the HBM. Now we've only got 200 watts for the processor. Now, if you've been reading benchmarks about current generation Xeons, you know that the difference between a 200 watt processor and a 280 watt processor in raw performance can be relatively substantial. You are moving from one area of performance to another, you know, tier of performance essentially. So HBM is going to bring that tier down, but the benefits of the HBM for the customers that need it is going to you know, bring it off into some direction over here, which is more optimized for that particular customer. That's going to be interesting to find out when we get these processors on hand. Other things that we know about Sapphire Rapids, it's going to be using Intel's new advanced matrix extensions, you know, part of its whole AI, one API, journey, DL boost, that sort of thing. Lots of people still use Intel uh, x86 processors for their machine learning training and inference because they're easy to code for, essentially. So Intel's still going after that market because that market is still growing and AMX will allow them to do that. We also know that Sapphire Rapids will support Bflow 16 and we'll have you know next generation uh, enhanced uh, security as well. There have been suggestions online that uh, Sapphire Rapids will be a tiled architecture, as in there'll be you know perhaps four separate compute tiles. Nothing Intel has verified yet. That would be Intel's first tile processor in the Xeon space. Now in that we're not counting the Cascade Lake uh, AP or CLAP processors that came out where they just bolted two 28 core uh, Cascade Lakes on the same package and it was all BGA and oh, they never really gave us a price for that. Though here's a picture of me holding one, really heavy. That was at Supercomputing 2019, I think. But we are expecting Intel to offer these uh, Sapphire Rapids with HBM processors in a socketed fashion. Though exactly what socket? Intel's being a bit cagey on. So the presentation that accompanied this announcement, uh, slide deck, standard Intel, 20 slides going through, you know, rough, high level topics. But the thing that noticed my eye, the thing that caught my eye is that on one slide here, we have one version of Sapphire Rapids that looks big and long. However, further on in the deck, they show this picture where Sapphire Rapids is more of a square. So which version is it? If we actually look at the long version of Sapphire Rapids, if we take the square and add HBM, that perhaps makes it long. However, this long sort of package kind of looks like what Intel's already shown off with XEHP or, you know, what their two tile XEHP, which is really, really weird. Either they're just saying, hey, this is a CPU and they're just putting SPR on that image and saying, hey, it's Sapphire Rapids, or we're going to see Sapphire Rapids in multiple sockets. And uh, if I was to put my money, you know, I would much more prefer a single socketed, you know, for everything with a platform uh, like Sapphire Rapids with any Xeon platform, to be honest. Though if HBM is that niche enough, I wonder, maybe they're partitioning it out to a separate socket. That's actually going to make testing of it really annoying because, uh, okay, if you buy a server, it's all packaged, but if you want to build one off the shelf, finding motherboard manufacturers that will actually sell these, at re sell the motherboards at retail for an obscure socket, like, uh, like an elongated one with HBM, we already saw in the past with uh, N grade sockets, if you remember those, they were really hard to come by and they're still really hard to come by. So I really hope Intel from the outset has designed this as a unified socket uh, design 
Uh, that's really what makes sense. I mean, Ice Lake recently went out on uh, retail. You can now buy the motherboards and the processors for that, which is great. And I want to see the same thing with uh, Sapphire Rapids, both regular and versions with HBM. Now, if you're wondering, yes, I bet ASRock Rack will make a mini ITX version of this motherboard, or at least I really, really hope they do. Now we have an opportunity to ditch the DRAM slots altogether, and we can fit everything onto one single mini ITX motherboard. Come on, Azure Rack, you know you want to do it. This is your minimum specification.